we're back at it. Going really good. Got it oriented pretty square to the cabinetry. I kind of found a happy medium in the movement uh, left to right. Got it about uh, in, the, in the center of the movement. That way you're not bound up on one side or the other uh, as far as the mounting bolts go. You want to make sure that they're coming straight vertical out of the floor or out of the flange assembly. One of uh, an important things to check is to make sure that the lid opens. Now on my uh, previous motorhome the cabinetry was tighter than it is here so it was imperative that you get the thing mounted in such a manner that the, the uh, lid would open otherwise it would hit the cabinetry. So anyway we're good there. Uh, Obviously you want to tighten the right and left side evenly till it's flush uh, mounted to the floor or to the flange assembly and uh, don't over tighten it. You don't want to crack anything. It's, it's very well made but you don't want to over torque it nor do you want to torque one side and then the other. So bring it down evenly, snug it down and uh, the mounting should be uh, complete at that point in time. All right, take the old handy dandy spanner, half inch, get it on the nut, and just start snugging it down a little. And we'll move over to the other side. Snug down the left side a little bit. And we're going to move over to the right side again. Very simple. And then the left again. Get on there. <laughs> there we go. like to make sure it's going down. Seated nicely. It still rocks quite a bit. You can see that rock there, so we want to make sure that we get the rock out of it. The rocking. So we'll snug it down a little bit more. And let's hit the left side again. and the right a little bit more. Old mechanics trick is to count how many threads you have on each bolt that you're working on. And make sure that you're going down evenly on the piece that you're working on and it definitely looks like the left side is just a little less threaded than the right side. So we'll put a couple more turns on this one. And then back to the right again. All right. Let's see if I can get this wrench into the picture. Okay, turn it the right way where you can see it. I switched from the uh, ratcheting wrench to just a very simple half inch box wrench set it on the nut and you can get a nice feel for it and you're starting to get to that point that it's tight enough and go to the other side and snug it down as well they both have about the same amount of resistance you're there this is where it just takes a little feel. Always better to just under tighten it. You can always come back if you find that the toilet is rocking a little bit. But you could just snug it up. 
I want to crack it, strip anything out, and I am really happy with that. So going to a little smaller wrench gives you a little bit better feel. Take a quick measurement on each side, make sure I've got about the same amount of bolt sticking out. I'm certain that when I do, but I'm just going to double check it real quick. Good to go. The final step in the installation will be to hook up the supply line, which is right here. We'll thread that into place, hand tighten, and then we'll do the water pressure test and we should be in good shape. The commode is mounted beautifully. Nice and solid. Looks great. All right, let's see what happens. Got the water pressure on from the uh, water pump. My fresh water tank. We'll give it a little push. Bring some water in. Delivery seems good. Now let's see what the back of the commode looks like. There's the connections in the back. They look good, not leaking. Very satisfactory. It looks good. Now let's check the operation of the hand sprayer. You press the button as you're holding down the floor and that causes the sprayer to activate or not activate as you release the button. And as you can see in mine, maybe, the hand's wet. It's leaking right there. So we'll take a little look at it. See if I can get that to quit leaking. Well, it's a pretty simple system. Now, I apologize for all the camera shake. I'm not sure how guys handle this in these tight quarters, but I've got it on the tripod now. We'll start to even it up a little bit for you guys. So I took the, the, the hand sprayer assembly off of the hose, which is this piece here. I'll get this into the shot. And I think that right along these threads, I'll put some Teflon tape again. Uh, going clockwise and I'll thread this back on and see if that cures the problem. Thus far this has been the only leak and I gotta tell you the truth I don't know if I'd spend the 35 bucks for one of these sprayers. They don't have a tremendous amount of pressure but anyway it was here I thought I'd try to utilize it. Could come in handy. So let me uh, let me button it up with a little bit of Teflon tape see what happens. So we're gonna apply the tape Careful that we don't close off any of the uh, hose itself. And we'll thread the tape on as neatly as we can. I'm in the shot. Beautiful. We're going clockwise. Try to pretty it up a little bit. Then we're going to put the sprayer assembly on it. Thread that down, and hopefully this will clear or uh, cure our leak. Let me get it nice and snug. There we go. Pretty good in the shot. Looks nice and neat. Let's try this again. All right, guys. I think I got it. Get that running. Spray the wand, and right there is where I had the leak, or possibly there. I think I'm in good shape. Teflon tape did the trick. Good, that was an easy fix. Not bad. Last thing we have to do is put the little plastic caps on to cover the bolts that to hold the commode to the floor. There are the little pieces like this, one on this side and one on the other. Slip those on and we're done. The one thing that I really have a little concern with, and hopefully this is all going in the shot, is that bad boy right there. Just want to make sure that it doesn't dribble uh, because the mechanism may be a little worn, but we'll keep an eye on it. No big deal. 
uh, do an install like this, uh, probably a good idea to turn your city water off, your supply line, at least uh, for a couple hours if you're leaving the rig. Uh, I, I guess uh, basically if you've got your water pump on and it's pressurized or city water hooked up, just make sure you stay and babysit it for a little while to make sure that you don't have any failures. All right, that's about it. Super happy. Me and my toilet, my new best friend. <laughs> All right, guys. Getting kind of hot in here. I probably should have fired up the generator and worked on uh, in conditions that were a little cooler, but not bad. All done. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and all that happy stuff and Lord's blessings. And thanks again for watching.